Uh, now we would like to uh, introduce uh, uh, some foundations for deep learning. So before we start talking about you know, neural networks, uh, convolutional neural networks and so on, uh, I'd like to make a step back and uh, talk a little bit about probabilistic learning. And why? Because you will see that this will structure our language, let's say, our concepts, and it will also help us to see a little bit from a broader perspective and uh, be more familiar, for instance, why in Python they use BCE laws, whatever it means, and this actually follows from probabilistic perspective. So first, let's see uh, how we can model uh, data. So let us consider uh, a random variable. So a variable that takes only two values. So uh, from, let's say, a tossing a coin, and it could be zero or one. Uh, and then we are interesting, uh, uh, interested in, uh, for instance, expressing the probability of observing a hat and the tail. And since this is a, a binary random variable, we can denote by x, we can denote the probability of observing hat, so c equals one. Or we can say that actually because there are only two possibilities, so probability of observing tail is actually one minus x. If we combine these two things together, we can define the Bernoulli distribution. And the Bernoulli distribution is simply uh, exp expressed uh, using this simple formula. And now if you want to check, if I say that c equals one, so then, uh, or c equal, equal zero, so then I will end up with one minus x, where x is of course probability of observing uh, a hat. And if I uh, set c to one, then I will get simply x. So we see that we can, without specifying whether c equals uh, zero or one, we can actually uh, obtain uh, the, the distribution of that. So this is good. Please keep it in mind. If you don't follow it, try to do it, uh, try to look at this uh, site a couple of times, take maybe a sheet of paper and uh, do this super simple check by yourself and try to understand it you know, to the bone because uh, this we will use extensively here in this, in this course. Then, of course, we can, we are interested in uh, having some data, right? Because this is something like, this is what probability theory tells us. And now we are moving towards maybe statistics, right? Because we want to uh, learn something. So to learn something, we need data. And we have some observations of, of uh, this coin. And for instance, we can say that we observed uh, tail, tail, hat, hat, uh, tail, uh, hat, hat. Now we need an objective function and uh, probability theory or maybe rather statistics right now. Statistics tells us that, well, if we have IID data identically and uh, independently uh, sampled, so it means that every single uh, observation comes, let's say from the same coin. And for this data, we can a formulate the likelihood function. And the likelihood function in this case is just a product because they are independently uh, and uh, independently sampled and identically. So it means that they follow the same, uh, same coin. So we have only one X, one probability explaining that. And now we can actually formulate the optimization problem because we want to find such X that minimizes the negative log likelihood. Why negative log likelihood? Because uh, normally, uh, so why negative? Because normally uh, optimizers uh, seek for minimum rather than maximum. This is just a convention. And so if we, if we want to change a maximum problem, maximization problem to minimization problem, we just need to take the, the, the negative, uh, so uh, the, the minus sign. So we consider the negative log likelihood. Why logarithm? First of all, because it doesn't change the optimum. And second of all, it has really nice property that log of product will give us the sum 
of logarithms. So we, we will use this uh, extensively as well. And now maybe take a look again at this optimization problem. So we are looking for such x that minimizes the negative log likelihood, all right? Of course, first we need to calculate the logarithms of uh, the log likelihood function, all right? So we will do it step by step. Unfortunately, we don't have a whiteboard. Normally we will do it with a whiteboard, but here we have it uh, on this slide. So, okay, so now, because we know that they are identically distributed. So, uh, okay, so first we take logarithm, sorry for that. Uh, so of course now the product changes to the sum. Now we know that they are identically distributed. So all of them follow the same Bernoulli distribution. Please notice that now we have CN and this index N uh, indicate that this is just nth observation. Now we apply the logarithm. So uh, using properties of the logarithm of a product and with some exponents, so we can simplify it in this form. And uh, now, we have, now we have our objective function. The next step is we want to find the best x for given data. So what we can do, we can actually calculate the derivative with respect to x and set it to zero. Something that you should be familiar with from uh, is just calculus, this fact. So what we do? So we just need to calculate the derivative and set it to zero. And uh, now because the, we use the uh, another nice property that the derivative of a sum is sum of derivatives. So we can go with the derivative inside the bracket. And after playing around, uh, multiplying and dividing, so we, of course, assuming some, uh, some mild assumptions, so we can eventually get the solution that simply says that the optimum the optimal probability of observing hat simply equals to the sum of hat and taking the average, right? So this is something that probably before even this slides, this complicated approach, you probably knew. But this is not the point, right? And we can, of course, uh, take a sample. Example, sorry, we have a sample. And for this, it's something like almost 50%, something. Probably this is a fair coin. But this is not the point. The point is to come up with the general approach and something that we can say this is the likelihood based uh, probabilistic learning, right? Because we actually can formulate it as a kind of uh, uh, algorithm or even method, maybe more generally speaking. So first of all, we need to determine what is the probability distribution. Then we need to determine what is the likelihood function uh, we need to check constraints, of course, because, for instance, maybe some uh, axes that we are what we what we look for, they need to follow some specific constraints. For instance, for Gaussian distribution, variance cannot be negative. And then we need to look for or find the best solution by minimizing the negative log likelihood. So this is something that all of you need to follow before you go into your code and uh, then your code will what it will do it will solve for you the the problem number four if everything is properly defined before so for instance we can have a p of y if we have binary uh, variables we look we use bernoulli distribution if we have continuous valued uh, real valued variables, we can use Gaussian distribution or something else, but uh, for instance, Gaussian. Then if our data is IID, so then, so again, uh, identically and independently distributed, so we can have the product of our distributions or if data is sequential, we need to think of sequential. So now we don't have just simply product, but we have some dependency on, on the path. We will talk about it uh, in this uh, lecture of, on the recurrent neural networks and also autoregressive models, generative autoregressive models. 
checking constraints, we need to see whether, for instance, something is like, okay, X must be between zero and one. If I formulate the uh, optimization problem, do I need to include it or not? It will be you know, taken care of uh, uh, by itself. Or maybe if uh, I'm looking for variance, so maybe I should use some specific tricks to ensure that it will be positive uh, and so on. You will see that this will recur in this course, especially when we talk about variational autoencoders. So please keep it in mind. And then in the end, we need to implement because probably we will not calculate it by hand, especially for deep neural networks. We need to use some kind of methods, numerical methods like uh, gradient descent or in general gradient based optimization. So this is the, the, the general approach, let's say. And please, again, take a look at it, think about it, go back to previous slides and uh, try to see this pattern, right? This is the, the, I can call it even almost like a methodology, uh, this probabilistic uh, learning, uh, likelihood based probabilistic learning. Because this will be uh, coming every time, but we will not uh, call it explicitly. 